What's the next move for Joe Biden? You've heard a number of administration officials. I know Amory mentioned Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin, but there's been uh, the Secretary of State, uh, Tony Blinken, and, and others have gone to Israel and, and really tried to hammer that message home. Uh, there's not only international humanitarian concern, but there's political concern for President Joe Biden here at home. Young voters, uh, Arab Americans, uh, Muslim Americans have been dismayed with the death toll in Gaza, and that those people are a key part of Biden's coalition heading into 2024. He needs to keep all those people on side. But it's a very difficult balancing act, because if he goes too far in the other direction, he could lose you know, Jewish Americans, uh, suburban voters, and, and people who are outraged with uh, you know, Hamas's conduct as well. So it's certainly not an easy task for the president. No, certainly not. And not just the Democratic Party is divided, but you see a lot of friction as well between the State Department, some members of the State Department that uh, leaks have come out, and the White House. But talking about 2024, just an hour ago, these comments President Biden made yeah. at a campaign in Boston where our Justin Sink is in the room, quote, if Trump wasn't running, I'm not sure I'd be running, but we cannot let him win for the sake of our country. Wendy, if Trump wasn't running, I'm not sure I'd be running. Is that a message at 81 years old when poll after poll says the American people think you are too old to be running for this country, saying, well, if he wasn't in it, maybe I wouldn't be? I got to give him points for honesty for saying what he's, <laughs> True, he's saying not what shading thinking. the truth there. Um, it was a really interesting thing. And if I were one of the donors in the room, I'm not sure what I would do with that information. I mean, I've already, you know, for those donors, I've already paid to come in the room and hear him say that. It's, it's you know, it's an odd um, position to, one, believe that he is the only Democrat who could beat Donald Trump. Um, others might have difficulty. He's done it. Biden certainly did it once. But the, um, but the polls after poll after poll are showing that voters are worried about his age, that voters are worried about his ability to beat Trump this time. And so I think that I, that's not the kind of messaging that if I were his PR people, I would be thrilled with. We mentioned at the top, uh, Tommy Tuberville, and marie lifting his hold on most, I won't say all, but most of the military promotions that have been held up in his protest against abortion policy at the Pentagon. Here he is from earlier today. I'm releasing everybody. I still got a hold on, I think, 11 four-star generals. Everybody else is completely released from me. Now, somebody else might, I think some, a few other people got holds on one or two or three people. But other than that, it's over. What do you make of this, Jordan? And what's the statement on the four-star generals? He's doing everyone up to these last 11. Is this a statement on, on elitism in the military? He said before the four-stars don't really do work anyway. They've got a big staff to do that for him. You know, Senator Tuberville's uh, statements can sometimes be as confusing as defense, his defensive schemes at Auburn. So I, I, can't, I can't really make sense <laughs> well of it. Well played, sir. Yeah, but, but listen, I, I mean, I, clearly there's been a lot of pressure on him. Not only from Democrats, I mean, that's been there for a while, but increasingly from Republicans. So I think the message from behind closed doors, there have been a lot of meetings up there on Capitol Hill with Republicans saying, hey, we got we to gotta drop the act here. You know, we got live wars in Ukraine and Israel, uh, time to get serious. Uh, you know, he seems to have listened. I don't know what, you know, concessions he may have gotten uh, one way or the other, but, uh, you know, we'll see if uh, he decides to drop these other holds in the coming weeks. So the DOD, the White House, breathing a sigh of relief for the most part, almost all mm -hmm. uh, of, of these blockades. But they have another big problem ahead of them, and that came yesterday with really in the forefront with Shalonda Young, um, director of OMB, putting out uh, this letter. I want to be clear, without congressional action, by the end of the year, we run out of resources to procure more weapons and equipment for Ukraine. This is really going to be dominating the White House's focus for the next month or two months. How long can this go on? Listen, I, the White House has got, I mean, th that letter was a warning sign. Uh, they really feel a sense of urgency here, not only to get this done in the next couple months, they want to get this done by the end of the year. They've repeatedly said this money is running out by December 31st. They've already gotten to the end. And if it doesn't come, they're worried that this is going to run up against uh, the next spending deadline, by the way, which is coming up mid-January, when a partial government shutdown can happen. Mm -hmm. They don't want a big debate about Ukraine and immigration interfering or getting held up by this other government funding debate. So they want to get this done now, but it's going to be very difficult given the dynamics in the Senate. Hearing the rhetoric today, things start to feel like they're falling apart. But we spoke earlier with two voices of real experience 
Jim Kessler, the Democrat, Rick Davis, of course, our Republican analyst, they both worked in the leadership and with the leadership in the Senate. And they said when you start hearing things fall apart like this, that's usually a darkest before dawn moment. <laughs> And they were more optimistic, Wendy, that there could be a deal. How about you? That's right. In fact, Senator Lankford of Oklahoma yeah. said, I think, uh, yet late yesterday, that he was confident there would be um, a deal. Of course, remember, the Republicans are also holding up um, what they're calling border security measures, some tightening of asylum rules and things like that to um, stop the flood of uh, immigrants coming over the U.S.-Mexico border. And they are insisting on that, the Democrats come on board with that, mm -hmm. before they pass Ukraine aid. Um, but Lankford, a very conservative Republican, said he thought it, exactly what you said, Joe, that it's the dark before the dawn mm. and that something will come out of this. We have not yet heard those noises from any Democratic senators yet. So I think there's there's a... We're maybe at 2 a.m. here and, you know, okay. got a little ways to go before the sun comes up. A few more up. nightmares to yeah. be had. <laughs>